Simulation Introduction Part 2 Why and how to use So why simulation? Well, I will provide some examples of useful and applied simulation in this part and actually talk through what we mean with robot simulation and programming because there are lots of other types of simulation out there but this will focus on automation, industrial simulation and the purpose of using that for robotics and the motivation from an industrial point of view. From a general point of view I would say that the use of simulation industry is increasing although in a rather slow way so to say. An example of applications areas include besides robotics of course production systems, material handling systems, planning and scheduling, internal and external logistics, supply chain management. And all this in a way I would say relate to robotics in various aspects. Um, when we talk about robotics we have a CAX acronym CAR C -A -R, Computer Age Robotics so if you search on internet you might find things using CAR related to 3D graphical systems which in this case can emulate kinematically described movements, like robots of course, dynamics of robot movements, process behavior, process in a way, in, in the meaning that it relates to the process the robot is actually performing, which could be assembly, machine tending, or processes like welding, spot welding, arc welding, or gluing, sealing, polishing, deboring, yeah, whatever actually. And those processes they have to be controlled in different ways. Other terms that uh, are used related to computer aided robotics are continuous simulation, geometrical simulation, robotic simulation, simulation systems, offline programming systems, and simulation and offline programming. So within this market of computer aided robotics, there are two major providers of general software tools which in a sense you can do whatever you like. They are connected to other applications uh, within the PLM automation software suite, product lifecycle management and, 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 uh, and the database uh, system, so to say, for that purpose. And those are either provided by Siemens or Dassault systems. And generally speaking, they can do whatever you like, but are quite complex and requires a lot of efforts to run. It's not just to install it on a computer and think that you can manage it by your own, you have to have some support. But if you are running a big enterprise with complex production, the payback can be really, really high, uh, or in a way that you will be able to run production in a way not possible without it. So less expensive systems also are on the market such as visual components with 3D Create or robot dependent systems like Robot Studio from ABB Robotics and uh, some open source systems. But less expensive systems doesn't mean that they are uh, free so to say. Uh, there is always a cost related to this either you pay something or it costs you to run it or to learn or to master it. Some use examples related to simulations could be in, when a company is introducing a new product, you want to in, simulate actually uh, how that product should be or could be produced or buying a new material handling system. You want to check out some what if questions and check what will happen if for example the interest rate rise by three percent or the market changes by 15 percent these are quite moderate changes but if the growth could be 300 percent next year could that be possible or how do we manage that could be a stupid question but uh, imagine that uh, your production plant is part of four or five plants within uh, an enterprise 
and uh, they s need to shut down a few places and that question comes to everyone and if, if, you, if you cannot provide a good answer you will be shut down so the question is quite valid you have to have a plan for things a simulation can actually point at these kind of specific issues what would you do if the growth is expected to be 100, 200, 300 percent next year. What is the plan? Or a financial crisis. You don't expect it, but it happens. Planning and scheduling, of course. So, I will provide some examples actually from the screen directly running simulation. Uh, first, designing workstations, and then designing a product, and third, checking out offline programming and some odd applications like the Malmö library and then offline programming and so forth. So we we'll see how it looks like. So the designing workstations relates to the design of the station itself, the placement study or robot and, and um, equipment around it, some cycle time estimations, optimal orientation of, the, of, of, uh, of, in this case, the work uh, object, in this case, it's the arc welding process and program generation, of course. So if we run this, uh, we have one robot, we have a two axis positioner, we have a work uh, object that is going to be welded. And we think in this case, or the assumption is that the plates of the work object is tack welding beforehand so we have a geometrical shape and then we have to produce the different welds in an appropriate orientation which the uh, uh, positioner will uh, get to us so to say and um, all the geometry we see now is directly from the from the screen and this is actually how it can look like uh, running in um, simulation, checking out possible collisions, uh, producing uh, proper um, orientations, running through, so to say. So you run to the end. And then the next one is a more complete system where we actually have uh, a second robot that feed the welding robot with the workpiece. And uh, here we have the final welding of two halves of the workpiece welded in the previous simulation. And a complete cell with fences and um, clamps and so forth, controller and in and output buttons. In principle, a production system with robots can be as complex as you have it in your in your uh, factory, but there is a limitation, of course. I mean, I mean, from a practical practical point of view, I mean, if you have one, two or five robots, it's not a problem for the computer. Uh, even if you have 10 robots, it would be quite okay to run it on a, on a decent uh, workstation. But uh, from a practical point of view, you should limit it so your simulation system is manageable um, in a decent way. I mean, it shouldn't take too long to actually model the system. So in principle, I mean, up to five or 10 robots uh, should be quite okay. If it's more, I would think I would recommend to modularize things and slice it down in smaller pieces and run them side by side or one at a time, so to say. And then you can interconnect them in different ways, of course. That's always possible. But uh, more of that later on. So, Rea Storen is a, a company in the South Sweden producing wheelchairs and the challenge they had was to start 
producing those using uh, robot and uh, weld arc welding and um, those uh, frames for the wheelchairs should be able to be customized for the size of the person sitting in the chair and um, uh, then they wanted to use simulation as a tool to do in the design process of a flexible fixture system and as a CAD system they used ProNeer and uh, in this case also the Delmia tool uh, to simulate concurrently different versions, different concepts actually to ask different what if questions and check how different uh, sizes of the frames for the wheelchairs could be uh, welded uh, and uh, what concept to go forward with to have the accessibility and the ease of use um, for producing these kind of uh, welded structures. So this is just to show uh, one part of the work of this um, flexible fixture system and uh, later on uh, the final fixture had a design like this one with the blue parts uh, showing the flexible the frames uh, which could be different sizes and the um, positioner uh, could hold uh, two different uh, fixtures which is swaps between and by that uh, increase the uh, productivity of the system. Now the simulation was done before the company actually had any robot available and um, from the CAD model the fixture was actually made uh, and then it was shipped to the vendor of the robot system and they tried it out to actually check that the uh, welding could be performed in the way as it was intended and the programs could be produced from the robot simulation system and the result was quite promising everything worked as intended and then they could go ahead and buy the whole system and then you I mean they actually minimized the risk everything was done quite nicely Cascuna Shipyard was um, a company that um, normally uh, operates for the um, Swedish Marine and produce vessels, subs and, and uh, surface vessels. Uh, but they also made the high bridge of the Öresund bridge between Copenhagen and Malmö. And um, in this case, there, it was quite a large number of products, more than a thousand. All were different but similar and the uh, size of each was roughly 5000 by 3000 by 1500 millimeter size and the purpose of the simulation was to study work pace, space needed for this for the robot system and the ability to actually produce the robot programs before the final offer to the customer now these products here belong to pieces on the bridge here and what you see here is something going up to the pylons these cables so let's have a look at how it looks like available on the shipyard was fairly large crane with a robot hanging down as in a gantry and um, the prototype was actually made by manually tack welding plates. It's fairly large, have some tolerances of course, but in this case uh, we're using um, seam tracking uh, to actually follow the weld in a proper way, do some uh, fine tuning to get the correct uh, alignment between the weld torch and the joints but anyway everything worked smooth it was possible to weld it that was confirmed by simulation although in many cases the robot was very close to the joint limits 
when you are close to 95, 98 percent of the joint limit, you have to be careful so you actually can reach whatever you are looking for. But uh, anyway, the simulation was quite successful and everything worked. And eventually, these uh, uh, products for the high bridge were produced at two um, places, both in Cascuna Shipyard and uh, their facility in Malmö as well. So the simulation proved to be quite successful. Malmö Library, they were about to install a robotic um, retrieval system for books. This is quite interesting case actually. And uh, the purpose was actually to produce scenarios of the working principle of a solution offered to the customer because this was something that has never been done before. And also during the simulation several issues were identified in the concept that has to be taken care of and some solutions were also accepted by the customer to fix things before and not just looking at some problems identified during the assembly and setting up the whole system. So things were fixed beforehand and money was saved. And how this looks like is just shown as uh, a concept in this uh, short uh, movie clips. So the robot is standing down in the, in the basement, down under so to say, and uh, retrieving the books. And um, this is just an overview of the whole system. And getting the, back, the books back in the shelf is done manually. But then they are in the right order and they are um, organized in the proper way. This way we look at the transport of the books as another viewpoint of the simulation and um, you can do whatever you like more or less. I mean you can show it in this way but you can also ride on the book and follow it on the transport conveyor uh, as shown uh, here. like this one, and then have a walk through the whole system, see how it looks like from a certain viewpoint. So there are many ways to do, but one has to be careful not to do too much or do exactly what is necessary to identify possible problems or, or nice features and so forth. And um, yeah, it looks like this. And the robot handling is another aspect looking at. So the gripper is working in a proper way. If you, we have a sensor, identify a book, what should it look like? What should it be uh, looking at? Uh, and um, the accessibility for different kinds of books and so forth. Um, are there any limitations? Heavy books, wide books have different sizes and so forth. So there are lots of things to look into in this kind of application. Martin Quist is a producer of products for earth moving machines and um, a new product line was to be introduced in existing equipment which was a robotic arc welding system with one axis positioner and the program time was estimated to several months using teaching methods and there were a lot of new products so it was a quite complex issue to do this and the typical ty cycle time was about five to six hours welding in robot cell for this kind of um, bucket for the earth moving machines so uh, what was done was actually to uh, introduce offline programming and simulation and use simulation tools to produce all the programs 
and uh, doing that the whole simulation part and programming could be done at the same time as the system was actually producing its normal products um, and then running in things could be considerably faster used typically during weekends or, or uh, evening shifts and so forth when the system was available um, different strategies were made to provide for uh, search operations like uh, weaving and uh, uh, different uh, strategies was made for and operations were made for uh, proper um, generation of programs adapted for the controller and mimicking different welding operations in a proper way. The result was quite promising and provided the programs that was uh, asked for in this case. So, simulation robotics. Usually we talk about modeling, analysis and programming. And modeling in a way that we actually have to model what we are intended to simulate and we provide some analysis related to psychic times, collisions, joint limit limits or possible singularities or robot axes. Program of course to, to program for the specific controller. And then based on this we are able to create some scenarios and answer what if scenarios. What will happen if we do this and this. And we will be able to support some optimization of complex programs. And I would say that, or I would even claim that in most cases, programs produced by these kind of simulation tools are in general more efficient compared to human made programs. They have a shorter time uh, cycle time uh, and run in a better way and they're better documented as well. So if we need to update things, we know what we, and how we have done things and we can update them in a proper way for a new product which is similar. And that type of update would be faster. Special issues related to robot simulation that is normally always taken care of is and related to collision avoidance which in some cases even can be automatic made by the system, in some cases not, or it will uh, alert you that we have a possible collision. Singularities means that uh, the robot is losing degrees of freedom and we need to take care of that because otherwise uh, there will be a problem in the, in the joint mo motions. Uh, joint limits of course, I mean uh, how far can we reach using the robot and some configuration solutions meaning that a robot when we run um, a program or simulation means that the robot is doing that in a suitable way but sometimes need to change its configuration I will show that later on and some optimization with respect to process and world model. So and next I will talk about what is simulation and why I use it. Okay, bye.